Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. This morning I'll be reading from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25. And Jesus is telling the story here, and this is what he says. I'm going to start at 25, verse 14. He says, For it is just like a man about to go on a journey who called his own slaves and entrusted his possessions to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, each according to his own ability. And he went on his journey... Immediately the one who had received the five talents went and traded with them and gained five more talents. In the same manner, the one who had received the two talents gained two more talents. But he who received the one talent went away and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now, after a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled the accounts with them. And the one who had received the five talents came up and brought five more talents, saying, Master, you entrusted five talents to me. See, I've gained five more talents. His master said to him, Well done, good and faithful slave. You were faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. The one who had received the two talents came up and said, Master, you entrusted to me two talents. See, I've gained two more talents. His master said to him, well done, good and faithful slave. You are faithful with a few things. I will put you in charge of many things. Enter into the joy of your master. And the one also who had received the one talent came and said to him, Master, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you did not sow and gathering where you scattered no seed. And I was afraid and went away and hid your talent in the ground. See, you have what is yours. But his master answered and said to him, You wicked, lazy slave, you knew I reap where I did not sow and gather where I scattered no seed. Then you ought to have put my money in the bank, and on arrival I would have received my money back with interest. Therefore take away the talent from him and give it to the one who has the ten talents. For to everyone who, shall, to everyone who has shall more be given, and he who shall shall have an abundance, but from the one who does not have, even what he does have shall be taken away. And cast out the worthless slave into the outer darkness, and in that place there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Pray with me. Lord, you've give, given us gracious plenty and abundance. May we never take that for granted. Speak to us this morning that we may certainly hear your voice, and see your face. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. This morning, Jesus tells us a story. And the story begins with these words, for it is just like. Now, in order to understand the story, we have to know what the it is. And the it is what Jesus talked about more than anything else. The it is the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. The it, the kingdom of God, is, is, is what Jesus came to usher in with his life, his death on the cross, and his resurrection. It's a kingdom where, where the broken are made whole. It's a kingdom where the lost are found. It's a kingdom where God is seen in every turn. He's heard. 
And this is the kingdom that Jesus is talking about here when he tells a story about a man who went on a journey. Now, whenever anybody goes on a journey, when you go on vacation, you don't take everything with you. You take what you need and maybe a little more in case you run into trouble. And he left the rest of it with three of his servants. To one, he gave five talents, one two talents, and one of his slaves, he gave one talent. Well, we don't deal in talents these days. A talent is a weight, a weight of silver. And one talent was 70 pounds of silver. And that was considered how much a person would earn in a lifetime. So the one he gave five talents, he gave us an incredible abundance. is is five lifetimes of silver. For the one he gave two talents, he still gave an incredible abundance, two lifetimes of silver. Now, the one he gave the one talent, we don't need to think he only gave him one little talent. No, it wasn't one little talent. It was 70 pounds of silver. A lifetime's worth of silver. Well, we know how the story goes. When he returned, the one he'd given five talents gained five more. It doesn't talk about how he did it. Maybe he, he bought sheep with it, and he, he began to, to, to breed those sheep, and he doubled the size of the herd, sold them off, and, and doubled the size of his, his money. The one who received the two talents did the same thing. He put, he put it to work. But the one who received the one talent, well, what he did was he buried, he hid, and he sat on what had been given to him. Well, to the two who had the, the five talents and, and the, uh, the, the two talents, he said, enter into my joy. But that's not what he, he had for the one. He, ha- he gave great warning to us all in the one who, who buried and, and hid and sat on his one talent. That warning was that he was cast into the outer dark- darkness. He called him wicked and lazy is what is what the man called him. Well, the meaning of this is, is, is pretty straightforward. That yes, God does give good, great abundance, a gracious plenty. And there's also, along with that great abundance and gracious plenty, great expectation. There's an expectation. An expectation of, for you and for me. And that... We're expected to do the best we can with what we have, where we are. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. Doing the best we can with what we have, where we are. William McLean, he um, spent some time in Korea. And there in Korea, he met a fellow, a tailor named Smitty Lee. Well, he had been in Korea long enough where... He had never met anybody named Smitty. So he asked the tailor, he said, is that a common name in Korea? The tailor said, no, it's it's not common at all. That during the Korean War, an American soldier from Virginia saved his life. And this is the way Smitty Lee put it. He said, he saved my life, I took his name. Well, that's what Jesus did for, for you and for me. He gave us life. When on the cross, he took all those things that would conquer us, all those things that would defeat us, all those things that would just grind us into nothing, the fear, the shame, the sin, he took it on the cross and he killed it. He nailed it to the cross. He took away its power once and for all. And when he rose from the grave on the third day, he did that so he might live his life through us, that his resurrection power would be a part of our everyday now this time, that was the kingdom that he came to usher in. That the broken are made whole. That the, the lost are found. And that, that God is, is seen and heard in every turn. That when we're called to do the best we can, it's not the best we can under our own power. It's the best we can through the power of the risen Christ. The way Paul puts it in 1 Corinthians 3.16 is, do you not know that you are the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in you? The Spirit of God, the risen Christ, dwells in you in power. In a power 
where when we do the best we can, it's the best that the risen Christ does through us, through you, and through me. We do the best we can, but we do the best we can with what we have. read a story about a 38-year-old washwoman. She loved to go to the movies, and on the big screen she'd see the beautiful actresses, and she'd say, oh, if I looked had a beauty like that, what, what, what could life be like? She'd see the, and, and hear those who could sing with beautiful voice, and she would say, oh, if I had a voice like that, what I couldn't do? And she always longed to be like those that she saw on the big screen. But then someone gave her a book, and, and right in the center of the book was this theme, this theme that it's like what we read this morning, that God's given each of us a gift, a gracious plenty, great abundance, and, and that it's what we do with those gifts, what we do with what God's given us. It's not what God's given someone else, it's what God's given us. Well, she began to think that what she was good at, and she began to think back, well, when she was in high school, she was considered to be pretty much the, the funniest girl in the school. And she thought, well, what would happen if I became a comedian? Well, at 38 years old, I saw an interview with her on YouTube, and, and she said at 38 years old to become a comedian that it was unheard of. Not only that, in her day, for a woman to become an, a comedian was unheard of too. People thought she had lost her mind. But at the height of her career, Phyllis Diller, you may have heard of her name before, Phyllis Diller was earning a million dollars a year. Now, I share this story not so we'll all become celebrity millionaires, but I tell this story to get the point that, that God's given gracious plenty abundance, a great abundance, gifts to, to you and to me. And we're called not to do the best we can with what somebody else has. We're called to do the best we can with what we have, the gifts that God has given to you and to me. And that's what God does, that He, he puts us together, church, to do His work to a world that's broken, that they might, not, that they might know wholeness, to a world that's, that's lost, that they might know what it is to be found, to a world that needs to see the face of God, to hear His voice in every turn. A little while back, I was waiting in line at Home Depot, struck up a conversation with the woman in front of me, and I invited her to our church. That's when her eyes kind of squinted and she looked off like she was looking for something. And then when she came back to this world, she looked at me and she said, Oh, I know that church. You gave me clothes. You gave me, your church gave me clothes, good clothes for an interview. And I got the job. And it was through your job networking. Job networking has been going on for a long time here at this church, helping over 300 people every month find a job, that we connect, connect employers with those who are looking for a job, connect people with, with those who can, can help them work on their resume, help them in the interview process, and do it in a faith-based setting. Before COVID, we were getting together once a month to share a meal together and to network together. That we put the gracious plenty that God has given you and, and me together, we put it together to help people find jobs. But not only that, to help feed people. Over a thousand people a week, we feed here through our My Neighbor's Lunch program. We've given away over 800 pounds of, of pro, fresh produce from our, from our garden that we help children and youth know that they matter to God and that they matter to us. That we find ways of helping people to, to see the, the hands and, and hear the voice of God in the everyday, in the ordinary. Children, that we 
help tutor those who have English as a second language, children from the schools around here, we help tutor them. Before COVID, it was in person, and now it's virtually. Over 90 kids we're helping to tutor each week in reading. It's when we put our little with God's much that, that we begin to see what God's doing in the world. And He's given us gracious plenty. We're called to do not the best we can with what somebody else has. We're called to do the best we can with with what we have. And so I'm not ashamed at all to invite people to to pledge to our 2021 pledge campaign, starting right now. And you can do that at rumc.com slash pledge. Or if you're here in the sanctuary, you can can come and get the the card off the, the prayer rail. Take it home. Pray about it. You can either mail it back in, bring it by the church, or, or make your pledge online at rumc.com slash pledge. That we're called to do the best we can with what we have. And make no mistake, God's given you and me gracious plenty. And there's a, a great warning against those who want to dig and hide and sit on it. There's a great warning against that. That we're called to do, yes, the best we can, yes, with what we have. And the third thing I want to talk about is we're called to do the best we can with what we have where we are, where we are. In the creation story, God formed Adam from the dust of the ground. But the story doesn't stop right there. It goes on to tell us that, that God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and then he became a living being. It wasn't just when he was formed. It was that connection with God, that breath of God, that spirit of God living in Adam is where he became a living being. And, and this is a thread that goes from the beginning of the Bible to the end of it. As a matter of fact, when Jesus rose from the grave, he met with his disciples and it says that he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. That life for you and for me comes when that his spirit lives on the inside of us. But it's at that point we don't sit back and go, well, you know, me and God, got a, we got a great thing going that it's just us. No, no, we're not only called to connect to God. We're also called in the creation story to connect to neighbor. The very next thing God says is it's not good for the man to be alone. I'll, I'll make a helper suitable for him. Now, that word helper, a lot of times we think, well, that's somebody just kind of help me do what I need to do, you know, pick up the socks, the underwear, help, help, help where I need help. That's not what the word helper means in Hebrew. That word also means savior. That the connection goes even deeper than that, that Eve was made from the rib of Adam and bone of bone and flesh of flesh. They were not so connected, they were to be a part of one another. But the story doesn't end there. Not only is, is God and Adam connected, not only is, is Adam and Eve connected, that they were put in a garden to cultivate and keep it. And that word cultivate in Hebrew is abat. It doesn't mean just to turn over the soil. It means to work and serve. That you and I were made to work and serve. No wonder there's the warning to the fellow who wanted to, to bury and hide and sit. That you and I are called to work and serve. To do the best we can with what we have where we are. To work and to serve. And, and that includes the, the whole of us. It includes our money as well. Now, I know some folks are saying, well, you know, the church is all, all it wants is your money. Well, that's not all the church wants is your money. Now, I will say what Jesus said. He said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And if you're sitting on your treasure, guess where your heart is? Well, that didn't sound like much of an invitation, did it? But it was. It was an invitation to give your heart to Jesus Christ. And for a lot of folks, that step never happens until we give our treasure. Until we give our treasure. 
This morning, I'd like to invite you to take part in what God's doing. What He's doing in the world today through this church to pledge to the 2021 campaign. You can do it at rumc.com slash pledge. And just like you make a, a budget at home, we have to make a budget here at the church. It doesn't honor God to, to spend money we don't have. He's given more than enough. And it's your opportunity and mine to do just the same, to give out of His great abundance that He's given to us, to give out of His gracious plenty that He shared with, with you and me. And doing that, then we can begin to give our heart, soul, mind, and strength to Him. Pray with me. Lord, breathe in and through us that we might do, yes, the best we can with Your Spirit living in us. We might do the best we can with, with what we have, the gracious plenty the great abundance that you've given to us, that we might do the best we can with what we have, where we are, here in this place, that, that you might use us together with our little put, with your much, that, that folks may be able to see and experience that even in our brokenness we can be made whole, that you've provided a, a force here in the world where the lost are found, that you've ushered in your kingdom here on earth where, yes, your face, your voice can be heard and seen at every turn. Thank you that we get to be a part of that. And may we, may we never take it for granted, bury it, hide it, or sit on it. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're a church that's a place of community and faith, and we're a welcoming church. I hope that you experience that online, but not only online. My hope is that you experience it through our Facebook page. But not only that, once we meet together in person, we're at 814 Mimosa Boulevard, and I hope you'll come and experience it in person. We're a welcoming church. We're a biblical church and we're a compassionate church. It's a place of community and faith where we help people live a Christ-centered life. And my hope is that you'll come and be a part of it. Thank you for joining us. <music>